Hello and welcome to another episode of DrER.TV. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any videos. Hello there YouTube, Dr. Carlo Ojeda, emergency physician. In this video, we're going to do a case scenario with an EKG interpretation that is out of this world. All right, so let's get started with the history. A young man, 41 years old. I'm 43, 41's young. So presents to the emergency department because he didn't feel well. He was outside working in the sun. It wasn't hot outside. It's Georgia. It's Easter time. It was beautiful outside. So it wasn't much as a heat issue, but he was outside working, didn't feel well, went into the shade, sat down, rested, started feeling better with the episode, got a little nauseous. When you go back in the history, it turns out three days before, he had had a similar episode where he was really sick, nauseous and vomiting. He had to sit down. Then the rest of the week, and he didn't feel all that well until this happened again the day of presentation. When he presented to the emergency department, yes, he had some chest discomfort, which he did not have at the time of evaluation, and he had this initial EKG. So let's take a good look at it and see what we find. So when I look at an EKG, the very first thing is the nurses kind of drop it in my desk, say, hey, here's a quick EKG for you to read. And we have that initial gestalt. Is this a normal or is this an abnormal EKG? First thing I gotta say, it's abnormal. This is the kind of EKG where I would tell the nurse, hey, where's that patient? I need to see him right away. But let's go through how I read an EKG and what it, then conclude why is this grossly abnormal and what, why is this more acute than other EKGs? First thing I do is look at the rate. Is it fast, is it slow? So I look at the rate and I could do the thing where you count the number of boxes, but I can tell you the rate is normal. It's somewhere around 90 beats per minute. A gross way to calculate it, so we'll find that QRS that matches the little box, and one box from QRS to QRS will be 300, 150, and then 100, and just under 100, 75, 60, and somewhere less than that. So this is somewhere around 90 beats per minute. So it's not fast and it's not slow. Is it regular? And to find out if something's regular, you use calipers. Calipers are this little tool, and you take your finger, you take the tool, open it up, and then you find a QRS to QRS complex, and then you try to see if it matches. Well, some of them could match, but some of them don't. Now, the cheap way to do a calipers is to take a regular piece of paper, match the QRS to QRS, and then that's your caliper, and then you move them like those two kind of match kind of match definitely don't match definitely don't match so it's irregular well is it irregular but regular what does that mean some EKGs have an irregularity that happens ever so often so like regular 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 irregular regular 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 irregular it's just like every three beats every five beats this one is irregularly irregular and so that's very important because that's almost pathognomonic of atrial fibrillation now in order to find out, ooh, does this patient have atrial fibrillation? Well, we'll look at to see if they have any P waves. Do I see any P waves? So this is V5. I don't see the best, best lead to see P waves, usually V2 or lead 2. And I mean, there's some waves there that could be P waves, but I'm just not sure. So that could be a, a coarse atrial flutter um, versus I don't really see P waves. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do, so we, first thing is to look at rate, second thing to look at rhythm, then I look at axis, uh, positive QRS, uh, kind of isoelectric and positive, so this is probably a normal axis EKG. And then I look at the um, P waves, are they regular or not regular, we already talked about that, QRS to QRS, are they regular? I look at the QRS complex itself. Is it thin or is it widened? Is it a, a QRS that came from the normal pathway or is it a one that's coming from the ventricles or interventricular conduction delay or even a bundle branch? Well, this is a normal uh, wide uh, QRS, so there's no interventricular conduction delay or bundle branch block. So then I'm going to look at the ST segments. Are they elevated or depressed? Well, here the ST segment is going to be depressed. If I throw a line here from the P segment to the ST to the um, T wave, you can see this is a depression. That little hole there is um, that little hole there is an ST depression, and you can follow that's a T wave inversion, 
you can follow here the ST segment might actually be a little bit elevated that might be an ST elevation there that might be a little bit of an elevation there um, ABF no elevations but here is an ST depression um, so ST depressions one uh, two an AVL then I look at the progression, it starts negative over here in V1, gets isoelectric and gets positive, so that's a normal progression of the EKG. Are there ST elevations? We already answered that. There's maybe one there. Um, maybe some ST elevation AVR. So this is a grossly abnormal EKG. I don't see a STEMI, ST segment elevation MI, but it's definitely an ischemic EKG. You definitely have ST depressions throughout. Uh, it's got very deep Q waves. Uh, we got the STQRS. I mean, I'm sorry, PQRST. So this wave here is the Q wave, and a Q wave is significant if it's more than a third the size of the QRS complex. So that's almost like bigger than the QRS complex. More than a box wide. So that's a significant Q wave there on three. Significant Q wave here on AVF. Significant Q wave in two. So that means. Q waves is usually infarct. So this patient probably had uh, an infarct in his heart. So we've gone through the analysis of the whole EKG and bottom line is this patient actually has a non-STEMI, a non-ST segment elevation myocardial infarction or non-STEMI. And his troponin, troponin is the biomarker for heart attacks or a protein that should only be living in the heart. It's released to the blood system whenever there's injury to your heart muscle, where normal in our hospital is anything less than 0.1. Between 0.1 and 0.5 is considered abnormal, but it's not, correct, it's not definitive of NMI until it gets to 0.5. So his was 12.9. So definitely a lot of infarct and a lot of uh, muscle damage to create this. Patient, uh, I consulted cardiology. They wanted to take him to the cath lab. And initially patient refused because he was waiting on family to arrive. And ultimately he was taken to the cath lab. So this EKG, boom, grossly abnormal. Right away you know you gotta go see this patient and um, order the cardiac stuff, order the aspirin, the patient was given heparin IV and he was ultimately taken to the cath lab. So there you learn about reading an EKG in the ER. Is it grossly abnormal or normal? Does this patient need immediate attention or not? Once you know they don't, then you read it carefully. Rate, rhythm, axis, patterns like uh, uh, axis, progression of the QRS complex through the V leads, ST elevations, ST depressions, every peak conducts to the QRS, every peak goes with the QRS, every QRS and QRS match, then you know it's a normal EKG. Hey, I'm working on a video evaluating the Cardia. The Cardia is a device that you can sync to your smartphones to detect rhythm abnormalities, more specific atrial fibrillation. Is this little device here, and I'm not publishing it yet because I wanna get some real patients with atrial fibrillation, different rhythms, and basically the patient, all they have to do is hold it like this, it goes to your phone, and it basically gives you a one lead EKG. So far, the results are good at detecting atrial fibrillation, but there are other arrangements I would like to see how good it is at. So stay tuned for that video. We're gonna see how good the cardia really is at evaluating patients. Hey, I hope you like this video. We'll see you in the next one. I have an EKG on a real STEMI, ST segment elevation in mind. We'll see you then, bye-bye. Thank you very much for watching and for other videos, go to www.dr.er.tv.